Hello guys, this is Karthik from EasyRautomation.com and this is part 15 of our BDD video series. And in this part, we're going to talk about dynamic table conversions. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 14 since this part is going to be a continuation of that part. Dynamic tables. Tables and dynamic tables in SpecFlow are discussed in greater details in part 7 and part 10 of this series. In those series, we try to deal with tables along with table.createDynamic instance and table.createDynamic set method from the assist.dynamics of specflow. We will see how the step argument transformation is automatically applied for the dynamic tables and how it is operated. So for that, I'm going to flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same project which we worked in part 14. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal with this particular step right now. So for that, I'm just going to uncomment this code. Oops. All right. And now we need to create a step definition for this. So for that, I'm just going to generate a step definition. I'm going to copy this method in the clipboard and then I'm just going to paste it right here. And as you can see in this particular step, there is a argument of table as a parameter, right? And if we try to work with this particular table, remember in part 10, we used something called as assist.dynamics. So I have already added that assist.dynamics reference in my project. And you can see that it's specflow.assist.dynamics. I have added that using NuGet. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a dynamic keyword and I'm going to give a name as menu. So let's create this as menu as well. Or let's give this as menus. And here I'm just going to do like this menus dot create dynamic instance. So this will create a dynamic instance for me. And as you can see from this table, there is like menu one, menu two, menu three. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see if I can get these values as well. So for that, I'm just going to put a string of menu one is equal to menu dot. Since it is dynamic, the value will be rendered during runtime. So menu two is equal to menu dot menu underscore two. And let's see if I could able to print this value successfully. So for that, I'm just going to say the value of menu one is and menu two is and I can just pass in the value something like this menu one and menu two. All right, I'm just going to save this. And now if I see the step definition, the feature files here, the step definition is being mapped. So let's try to run this and see if it works. All right, seems like it is passed. If we go to the output, we can see that the value is coming here. The value of menu one is login and menu two is settings. Great. So I'm just going to close this and let's come back here. So instead of a table, something like this, if I want to see its enumerable values, if there are multiple values available in my features, and if I want to get all the values or something like that, then what I can do is I can use a method dot called dot create dynamic set. So this will return a I enumerable type of dynamics. So I can just do something like this. And I need to do one more thing to get the values out. So for that, I'm going to say something like this. Let's change this as menu list. And for menu is equal to menu list dot first. So I need the first value from the table. Now, if I save this code and if I run, try to run this code and I will see the same output as the one I saw before. So it's exactly the same result because technically there is no value other than just only one value. And also we are getting just the first value from the list. 
so there is no problem here and what I'm going to do is I'm planning to do a step argument transformation meaning I don't have to deal with all these create dynamic set and all those things I don't have to do that I want this to be happening automatically and this conversion should happen to me automatically as well so what I'm planning to do is I just want to cut this code I'm going to paste this code here and the menus is going to be something like maybe the menu list right and then I'm just going to remove this particular line of code as well and I want to see that this particular step argument transformation happens automatically or not but actually this happens out of the box the reason is if you go to the app.config file you can see that there is a step assembly of assembly of specflow.athis.dynamics is automatically added so in this particular assembly the custom step transformer is already written so this kind of class file is already available in that particular assembly and that's the reason the step argument transformation for even this kind of parameter will automatically be handled by specflow let's try to run this and see if this code really works and makes sense so I'm just going to run this code and you can see that this time it is successfully passing the reason is the app.config file has this specflow.athis.dynamics this will be added automatically once you add a reference for the specflow.athis.dynamics from the NuGet so this is one of the another kind of step argument transformation happening in your steps so that's it guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day